We got some good news for the Buffs. Travis Hunter is expected to return to action for today's game at Arizona. The two way star injured his shoulder last Saturday, did not come back in the game after this hit. So Colorado gets its best player back on offense and its best player back on defense. Yeah, he plays a lot of football. Here's his snap count through six games, always into triple digits, averaging 126 until a career low 43 from last week against Kansas State. However, if you're listening to what I'm saying, we have the injury to blame for that low snap count. Let's welcome in our friend Justin Adams from CBS Colorado to talk about this big game. And of course, we got to talk about Travis Hunter. He will return after that shoulder injury. As I mentioned, he famously plays a lot of snaps more than any other player in college football. So how will his return from injury potentially impact how he is used today? Oh, it's going to be huge for this team, especially when you think about what the Buffs like to do. Number one, let's start defensively. There are a team that wants to be in man to man coverage throughout the game. That's what they do. That's what they put their hat on is they want to play that type of defense. Well, today you have a guy at Ted Rotter McMillan who has four touchdowns this year. Also is a guy who is seen as one of the best wide receivers in the college game. And last year with Ted Rotter McMillan played right here against the Buffs at Folsom Field, he had a touchdown and also had over 100 yards receiving in that game. So it's very important to have your best defender go up against one of the best wide receivers in college football right now. I know selfishly as a fan, I want to see that matchup, uh, but NFL <laughs> scouts also would like to see him go up against T-Mac, a guy who was projected first rounder. So Hunter, he made some headlines this week. I'm sure you've talked about this a lot as a guest on the RG3 podcast. Before we talk about it, let's take a listen. Y'all see Ashton and Gen and but it's not like we haven't seen a running back that's good. All right. We haven't seen a player that plays both ways, and I'm going to keep saying that. It's like... He have 90, what, I think 95 carries? Yeah. For a, a thousand, thousand yards. yards. yeah. If I had 95 carries, how much yards you think I have? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. So, that's a good so point. I'm trying to tell him, like, if I had 95 targets on defense, what do you think I'll have? Right. Oh. If I had 95 catches on offense, what do you think I'll have? So I try to take, like, I have, he got double the touches I got on the offensive side of the ball, and I still have defensive stats that's still crazy, and we only in the week six. Yeah. So, you know, I don't, I'm not going to argue about it. I think most of the uh, criticism this week was if he should have said that because he kind of has a case here. But uh, Justin, I mean, you watch him up close and personal. You get a better view than any of us here nationally. So what do you think about his Heisman candidacy? Uh, first of all, when you talk about who's the best player on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball, yeah, Travis Henry, uh, Travis Hunter, rather, is that guy because of what he does and how he affects both sides of the game. You look at a guy who has 16 tackles, has three pass breakups, also has two interceptions, and oh, by the way, the fumble that he caused was a game winner against Baylor in overtime. He affects every part of the game, no matter where he is on the field. You can literally say what side of the field is gone. You're looking at this highlight right here. This is going to be an interception he had against Colorado State. It was man-to-man -man coverage, and it was just a ridiculous type of play that he made. And this is actually one of my favorite plays this season, when he made a one-headed catch against North Dakota State. And that's the fumble that he caused that we talked about going up against Baylor. So Travis Hunter is that guy who is deserving of everything that he is getting when you talk about him having the, the Heisman and being the guy who should be looked at for the Heisman. But I want to go back to Ashton Jensen real quick because we don't look at this guy a lot, okay? This individual has been ridiculous all season long, has rushed for over 1,200 yards. He also has 17 touchdown rushes this year. And when you look at the teams, you say, okay, he's played against teams like Jordan Sutherland played against Hawaii, other teams like that, right? He hasn't played against any major team where he has. He played on the road against Oregon, and in that game against Oregon, where everyone knew that he is the offense, Ashton Jinty is the offense, he only rushed for 192 yards and had three rushing touchdowns in that game alone, too. He's a ridiculous talent. The numbers show for themselves. So you really can't go wrong either way. But look, I'm going to go with Travis Hunter just because of what he brings to both sides of the ball. We haven't seen this ever in, in college football. I'm talking about, you can talk about Woodson. You can talk about all these other individuals, Champ Bailey as well. We have never seen a player like what Travis Hunter is doing right now on the football field. 
Heisman voters will have to decide between whether they prefer historic, like what we're seeing from mm -hmm. Astrogenti, or like you said, unprecedented, which is what we're seeing from Travis Hunter. I, I am not a Heisman voter, but that is a tough decision. I do not envy them. There's, yeah. of course, a lot of quarterbacks who have a, a say in that as well, so we'll see what happens down the stretch. But looking at this Colorado team as a whole, with a win at Arizona today, they will get its fifth win of the season, which surpasses last year and matches their total wins from the last two seasons combined. We know the college football public loves to latch on to Dion's quotes, his media feuds, and all those viral moments, but the results are the results here. I mean, as a coach, where have you seen the most growth from Dion Sanders in this year? He's actually gotten better as a coach because last year, let's keep it real, if Dion Sanders, the head coach, played the way that he did in the NFL, that guy would have been in the, it wouldn't have been in the NFL for too long. He would have been gone after one or two seasons. Deion Sanders wasn't that good last year as a coach. It's just, it is what it is. But this year he has finally started to settle in as a coach and started to get better at the FBS level. And so he's really improved in that area. Um, there hasn't been a lot of defensive breakdowns that we have seen from last year, but this is the main thing this season with the Buffs right now. Last year they had a tough loss against Stanford where they were up 29 to nothing at halftime and then lost that game. And ever since then, they went in a tailspin and weren't able to go and get back on track and win from there. Can the bus be able to do so coming off of a tough loss against Kansas State? Can they come back on the road against Arizona, a team that's really right now having lost their last two, and be able to come and win this game? And this is my biggest thing for the Buffs right now. They need to go into the bye week in two weeks as a bowl eligible team. They take on Arizona on the road, then they come back at home right here to Folsom Field, and they take on Cincinnati. If they could be bowl eligible at 6-2 by that time, then they could go and say, hey, we're not worried about getting to a bowl anymore. We're now looking to get to the Big 12 championship game. And you know what? If you're in the Big 12 championship game, or if you're close, well, one guy by the name of Travis Hunter will get a lot of looks at being the high school. Seems like we've got a wide open Big 12 and anything is possible. But yeah, that first bowl appearance since 2016 would be massive for the Buffs. And they mm -hmm. seem to be in good position to get that done. Justin, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate the great breakdown. You heard him mention the schedule, trying to get to that bye week. I said if they win at Arizona, all these great things happen. But that is a big if. It is a tough road trip that they will make today at 4 Eastern. And then you heard Justin mention it. They've got Cincinnati, then they've got a little bit of a rest. A couple tough road trips down the stretch, but a team that used to look like it would be maybe a tougher one has gotten a little bit easier. Utah without Cam Rising, starting a true freshman quarterback. Certainly a lot of opportunity for the Buffs down the stretch. We'll see if they get it done.